So I couldn't find my home because of all the destruction, said one resident of Han Yunus as he returned to the town after Israeli troops withdrew. Another said, isn't the bombing, death and destruction enough? Those are the reactions of just some of the stunned Palestinians as they tried to salvage anything they could from the landscape left by Israeli troops who'd left a day earlier after months of fighting and bombardment. Now it comes as Hamas says it is considering a new framework for a truce proposed during the latest round of negotiations in Cairo. Well, let's discuss the latest. Our international affairs uh, uh, correspondent, uh, Ketavan, Ketavan Gordistani, is joining me here on set. Um, Ketavan, peace talks and they're ongoing, but Hamas, well, it's difficult to, to read into it, but not seeming very enthusiastic about the latest proposals. No, they've basically said that uh, the proposal doesn't meet any of uh, their demands, but they said that they would still uh, go ahead and review it and give uh, their answer. So maybe a glimmer of uh, hope there that they're not completely closing uh, the door. But the first reaction is not uh, great, and that is because there's still uh, some major uh, sticking point. There seems to be a sort of understanding on the exchange part of uh, the deal, meaning uh, the release of uh, probably uh, women and the elderly or the sick uh, among the hostages in exchange uh, for uh, several hundred uh, Palestinian prisoners. That seems to be agreed on. Uh, there's another aspect that seems to be agreed on, which is the first uh, sort of step in uh, this deal would be an initial truce of about uh, six weeks. But after that is where uh, the problems start, if you will, because Hamas wants a permanent ceasefire. The Israelis say, absolutely not. We want to get back in there and finish the job, basically. Basically. And uh, there's also uh, the question of the withdrawal of Israeli force, and uh, that also is a non-starter for the Israelis. There seems to be a little bit of movement on the request by Hamas to uh, allow Palestinians uh, to return uh, to uh, their homes, not just in the south, but possibly also uh, in the north. Uh, that could be uh, some uh, sort of compromise uh, there. But so far, uh, there seems to be uh, no real uh, movement. The Qatari foreign minister ministry uh, spokesman, uh, the Qataris, of course, being one of the mediators in uh, this uh, in these negotiations, said that he was more optimistic today than he was a couple of uh, days ago. But he also said we are by no means at the last stretch of uh, these talks. So these talks likely going to go forward. And in the meantime, there's still uh, bombardments, still strikes and still people dying. Yeah, and we've been seeing as well those images of people returning to their homes or what's left of their homes, we should probably say, in Han Yunus, as the Israelis are still insisting that that pullout from Han Yunus is just so that they can regroup and get ready for that um, deluge, if that's the right word, on Rafa. Yes, and uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is very clear they are going full steam ahead on that major ground operation in Rafa. He said that there was a date that had been set, even though he didn't uh, give uh, that exact uh, date, because uh, the Israeli government believes that this is the only way to victory, that they need to get into Rafa, because that is the last major uh, stronghold uh, for uh, Hamas. And that is despite the persistent criticism and warnings uh, from their partners all around uh, uh, the world, including uh, just recently this op-ed uh, that was uh, written by the French president, Emmanuel Macron, along with the Egyptian president, Sisi, and uh, the king uh, of uh, Jordan. Uh, this op-ed uh, focusing uh, on what they call the dangerous consequences of an Israeli offensive on uh, Rafa. Uh, they also uh, called uh, for an immediate uh, ceasefire and and also, at the same time, the foreign minister of France, Stéphane Sejourné, speaking to France 24 uh, yesterday, talking about the possibility of sanctions uh, if uh, humanitarian aid doesn't get in uh, to Rafa. Of course, the French, the Jordanians, the Egyptians, the Americans, too, repeating their opposition to a, a major ground operation in Rafa. The spokesman uh, for the State Department uh, saying that uh, they had made it clear to the Israelis that there was a better way rather than going into uh, Rafah uh, to achieve uh, what they called a legitimate goal, which is to defeat uh, Hamas, but said that a major ground uh, operation in Rafah would ultimately hurt Israel's security. Yes, there's pressure from outside, but Benjamin Netanyahu also has pressure from inside in the opposite uh, direction. Uh, the uh, minister, Itamar Ben-Gvir, who is from the far right, uh, saying that if 
Netanyahu ended the war without going into Rafah and without doing that major ground operation. Quote, he will not have a mandate to continue serving as prime minister. So you see there the pressure from the outside not to do it, the pressure from the inside uh, to do it, and Benjamin Netanyahu so far insisting that he will.